And for those of y'all that got it, say amen. And for those of y'all that don't got it, just say, wait just a minute. Wait just a minute. Hey, that'll work with me. I'm fine. <laughs> It is so good to know that Jesus is the best thing that's ever happened to us. Yeah. And the yeah. best thing, and the greatest gift here on earth is Jesus Christ. Yeah. And along the lines with the best thing, Jesus Christ, now that we do have the best thing that's ever happened to us is Jesus, there's also some rules we got to follow when it comes to being with Jesus. And once again, it is the book of Colossians, chapter 4. Mm -hmm. Chapter 4. Now it says in Colossians, chapter 4, Masters, give to your servants that which is just and equal knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, pray also for us that God would open to us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace Season with salt that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Refer to Colossians chapter 4, 1 through 6. May God have a reading of listen on his word. Now you may be seated. Now this is a good part about being uh, a Christian, being in the ministry, is because, like mom said, you got to expect and expect it. Mm -hmm. And you never know when opportunities are going to come. But when opportunities come, you must take them. And with mom being sick and everything, of course, it, it's unfortunate that she is sick, but that's the thing about being in the ministry, being a child of God, is you must be ready at all times. Mm -hmm. And thank God that I'm at a point where I am ready. Now, the song, The Best Thing That's Ever Happened to Us, a wonderful song, talking about the name of Jesus Christ. But like I said, when it comes to Jesus Christ, there has to be rules for living like Jesus Christ, living holy. And as children of God, we ought to want to live like Jesus Christ. Now, it also says, when it says, Masters, give to your servants, that which is just as equal, it pretty much just says, Obey them that are under you. Pretty much just, when they ask you to do something, you do it. When they tell you that you need to do something, you do it. But that does not mean that you have to be a slave under them. Now there's a difference between having a master that is righteous, that is great, and having a master that is pretty much like a slave owner. Now when it comes to masters, I think of one good master, and that is the good God Almighty. Now God is the wonderful master and why is he the wonderful master is because he never lies he always tells the truth he is always honest and there's a few times that he can change his mind but it just depends on how you are it depends on how obedient you are it depends on how holy you can be and this is the part I like about uh, being holy is when you're living for God you ought to want to change your life. When you're living for God, you ought to want to be holy. You ought to want to be like Jesus Christ. And if you don't want to be like Jesus Christ, then there's something wrong with you. If you're not saved, if you're not changed, if the soul inside of you is not buried within, then there is something wrong. But I come to tell you, my friends, that with the love of Jesus Christ, you can live holy. With the love of Jesus Christ, you can walk just like Him. And with the love of Jesus Christ, 
all things are great, all things are good for His glory. And when it says in continual prayer, that means continue praying. It's always be watchful, always be careful, always know when the enemy is coming. Because you never know when the enemy is going to come. But when the enemy comes, be ready for his attack. Because you can overcounter the attack with Jesus Christ. And I thank God that we can overcounter the attack of the enemy. Because we have someone greater that can defeat the enemy. And that is Jesus himself. Nearly died 2,000 years ago for all of us. And like I said, Jesus could have said, I'm not dealing with any of this. But with Jesus Christ, I thank God that He is present. I thank God that God sacrificed His only Son, Jesus, so that we can live holy and we can live righteous. And when it says, watch in the same with thanksgiving, it's pretty much like I said, be watchful and be careful of those. Even those around you that are closest, you got to be careful. Because sometimes the ones that is closest to you, are the ones that can hurt you the most. And the devil can use family. He can use friends. He can use those that are closest to you in order to get your attention. But I got news for you. With Jesus in your life, you can overcounter the enemy. You can overcounter the devil. You can overcounter his attacks because the devil cannot cross the bloodline. The devil cannot cross the name of Jesus. You see, the devil knows the word, but he has no authority to use the word. He has no authority, he has no power to use the word. Because the devil can only do so much what God allows him to. Once God tells the devil, no, you can't do it anymore, then the devil has to stop. He ain't got no choice to stop. And that's like I said about the master. God is the ultimate master. And God has the final say so on things. And like... When the earth was destroyed by water, and the reason why it was destroyed by water is because people was so disobedient, and they was at a point where God was just like, you know what, I'm going to have to destroy the, the earth by water. And don't you know that when we are getting ready to be attacked, when we're getting ready to be hit, when we're getting ready to be beat up, then we want to call on the name of Jesus which we should have called on the name of Jesus in the very first place. Because when you don't call on the name of Jesus, things can go bad or they can go worse for you. Now, you can't go out here and worship God and you can't worship the devil at the same time. You can't live holy and you can't live for the devil at the same time. You can't live righteous and live ungodly at the same time. You have to pick one or the other. You gotta either live holy or you gotta live like the devil. And this is the question that we have for you today. Are you gonna live holy for God or are you gonna live like the devil and live in the world? You see, I don't know about you all, but I choose to live holy and I choose to live righteous. The reason why I choose to live righteous is because there's a better thing up in heaven. There's a better place to go to and that is heaven. And someday when we all go up into heaven, I want to rejoice with my brothers and sisters in Christ that are up there in heaven. I want to be with my Lord and Savior Jesus. And if I got news for you, if you can't live with the people down here on earth, then what do you expect when you go up in heaven? If you can't live like you if you can't live holy down here, then there ain't no way you're gonna make it up there and live holy. If you can't worship with your brothers and sisters in Christ down here, then you can't worship with them up in heaven because there is only one heaven. There is only one denomination. It doesn't matter if we're Baptist, Pentecostal, if we're Methodist, Catholic. It doesn't matter if we're black and white. It doesn't matter if we're man or woman. It doesn't matter if we're tall, short, skinny, fat. It doesn't matter if we got blonde hair, brown hair, black hair. It doesn't matter if we wear glasses or no glasses. All that matters is we're all going to be up in heaven rejoicing with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I can't wait until that day until we rejoice with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But in order to live up in heaven, in order to go up to heaven, you got to live holy. There is no other part about it. And like I said, when you live holy, 
then your soul becomes clean. Right. And cleanliness is next to holiness. That's right. When you first get saved, you want to go out and tell everybody, hey, look, I got saved. I got turned my life around. And my life changed for the good and for the better. And if you don't go out here and say that you got saved, if you don't go out here and say that you're living holy, then you must not got saved the first time. You must not have turned your life around the first time. Because when you turn your life around, you're going to want to tell everybody about the goodness of Jesus. You're going to want to tell everybody about the goodness of His glory and the goodness of His praise. And meanwhile, while praying also for us, that God would open us a door. You see, when you start to pray, when you start to worship God, then the doors of heaven start to open. When you begin to worship God, when you begin to pay tithes, when you begin to pay your offering, when you begin to sing for His glory, when you begin to minister in His Word, when you begin to go out here and just make a phone call and just to say to your brothers and sisters, hey, is there anything that you need? Or is there uh, any place that we can take you? Can we pray for you? Then that's when the doors of heaven start to open. And when the doors of heaven start to open, hey, blessings start to come and go. Blessings start to come. And I thank God for blessings. I thank God for obedience. Because obedience is better than sacrifice. And any time the Lord says something to you, you must obey the Lord. You must obey the word of God. Now, how many has ever the Lord told them something and they've not obeyed the word of God? Mm -hmm. I know a bunch of hands better be going up right now. A bunch of hands better be going up right now. I know there is a point in time that we question the word of God. Yeah. There's a point in time that we say, God, now is this really you? Are you really assured that we're supposed to do this or not? And the Lord God will come up to you. And most likely he will tell you, yes, this is what, this is what you're supposed to do. Uh -huh. But then there are times that the Lord God will not let you do something. And why is it sometimes that the Lord God will not let you do something? Well, I'll tell you what. Sometimes the Lord God will not let you do something. It's because maybe it's not, time, it's not that time or not that season for it to happen yet. Just maybe something needs to happen before the time or season comes. Mm -hmm. Maybe at times it's because you got something in you that needs to be cleaned. Because if you got unholy hands, if you're living unholy, then sometimes that blessing is what is uh, stopping you from getting blessed. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's sometimes is the reason why that, that blockage is in the way. Yeah. And when blockage is in the way, then all of a sudden things start to happen. Because when blockage gets in the way, a lot of things happen. Sometimes we get angry, sometimes we get mad, we get upset, and then there's times that we just don't flat out care. But I got news to tell you, when you get rid of that blockage, when you get rid of that inside of you, then that's when the Lord God can work. It is only then when you get rid of your uncleanliness it is only then when you get rid of the unliving, then that way you can start living once again. But it also says, walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time. Now, we all know that the Lord God is great and the Lord God is good. But there's times that we have to have wisdom. There's times that we have to be smart about the Word of God. Now, a lot of times when we go up for prayer and everything, like, we see some people that come up and do the same old thing. They pray every Sunday, and then they go out and get a drink every Sunday. Yeah. They pray every Sunday, yeah. then they go out and party every Sunday. Yeah. They pray every Sunday, then they go out here and sell weed or sell drugs every Sunday. Yeah. But then there are times that people come up to the altar, and they are genuine, and they are real. And that they will not leave the altar until they get blessed. Amen. Now this is where wisdom comes into play. And see, you got to decide which one is it. Is the person coming up here uh, to be genuine? Or is the person coming up here just to fake and shake? Or just to be a fake rooney Now, a fake rooney for those of y'all that don't know, is somebody that comes up here and prays every Sunday 
and then goes out and parties and drinks every Monday mm -hmm. or goes out and parties and do whatever every a week yeah. and then come to the church house. Well, I got news to tell you, to live holy, you cannot be out there in the streets every Sunday or every Monday or whatever day you want to be out in the streets and then come out here in the church and expect a blessing. Amen. You've got to live holy when it comes yeah. to the Word of God. And I thank God for living holy. I thank God for genuine people that we still got around the church house. Because in the percentage wise, there is 20% that are still going to church. Now that is half a million people that are still attending church and that are still living holy. But now there's a difference between attending church and actually living right and living holy. You see... Anybody can attend church. Oh, yeah. The devil can attend church. Mm -hmm. He can sit out in the front pew every Sunday, sing, preach, shout, hoop and holler. But then when it comes to living holy, you have to have your soul right. You have to have your soul clean. Mm -hmm. And you must be willing to turn your mind and turn your life around. Yeah. And yes, there are times that you're going to have to turn your life around. Especially if God is calling you to do something. If God's calling you to minister, if God's calling you to sing, if God's calling you to go on the phone and talk to somebody, if God's calling you to be a witness in the community or be a missionary, then yes, sometimes you are going to have to turn your life around. And believe me, I am one of them. When God called me into the ministry, I was like, now God, now is this really you wanting me to be a minister? Because you know... I want to get my education first. I want to make sure I want to live my life first. And then I want to minister. But when it comes down to it, you must obey God. Amen. And I've learned the things when you obey God, life can be so much better. It can be so much help for you. And everything turns around when it comes to living holy for God. And let your speech be always with grace. Now, when it says your speech, that means your tongue, that means your mouth, that means your words has to be clean, and your presence has to be clean, and that means your walk with God has to be clean. You cannot have a foul tongue and cuss everybody out and then be a Christian at the same time. You cannot go out here and talk about your brothers and sisters in Christ and then expect to live in the Word of God. You cannot go out here and gossip every Sunday about, oh, they didn't have the right kind of clothes on, or, oh, they didn't have the right kind of shoes on, or they didn't sing right, they didn't minister right, and expect to live in the Word of God. Because when it comes down to it, it just ain't going to happen. When it comes down to it, your speech has to be very important, and it has to fall in with God. Now, we all know for a fact that... 24-7, we're not going to have our minds focus on Jesus 24-7 all the time, which we all should, because we're all human. Like, there are times that we have to go out here and go to the store. There are times that we have to go out here and go to the doctor. There are times that we're going to have to sleep, which I hope everybody here gets sleep every now and then, <laughs> and rest their eyes and stuff. And there are times that we have to go out here and eat us something, or there are times we have to go out here and and talk to our families and everything. And see, we're all human and everything. But the goodness about this is, is the Holy Ghost. Yes. Now, the Holy Ghost, on the other hand, when your human side is there, the Holy Ghost is a comforter. The Holy Ghost can come over and take over. The Holy Ghost will let you know when everything is going good and when everything's going bad. And the Holy Ghost will know when... Uh, you should do something when you should not do something. Now, for those of you that still got your Bibles open, this is the good part about this. Go to Psalms 100. Because this also ties into the Word of God while I'm preaching today too. Psalms 100. And in Psalms 100, now the first verse it says, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. And when you live holy, when you want to sing in his presence, 
you got to make a joyful noise, not a terrible noise, not a booty shaking noise, not a disastrous noise, but a joyful noise to the Lord. When you make a joyful noise to the Lord, don't you know that the Lord is always smiling and the Lord is always happy to see people worship Him in spirit and in truth? And don't get me wrong, I love the shouting, I love the preaching, I love the speaking of the tongues, I love people giving their testimonies. I think that's a wonderful thing. But when we learn to make a joyful noise and worship, don't you know that makes the whole church and the whole congregation feel real good? Yeah. And don't you know that the Holy Ghost will come down and His presence feels so great? And when you see someone get saved, see someone get delivered and set free, hey, that beats any service any day of the week. Mm -hmm. Because heaven rejoices over one person getting saved. The angels rejoice over one person getting saved. And it also says, Know you that the Lord, He is God. It is He that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people, and the sheep of His pasture. We are His people, we are His flock, we are His angels, and we are His soldiers of God. And the Lord God loves to see everybody come and worship Him in spirit and in truth. And it says, enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Be thankful to Him and bless His name. When we all get to heaven and rejoice in His name, that is going to be a wonderful time because there's not ever going to be a time in heaven where there's going to be no non-noise. There's going to be no silence. It's going to be all loudness. And I got news for you. If you can't worship down here with your brothers and sisters in Christ, if you can't uh, worship with loud noise down here, then heaven is not for you because heaven is nothing but loud noise. Heaven is nothing but rejoicing and giving God glory and praise. And we're all going to have to bow down to the Lord one day. Everybody's going to have to bow down. The devil's going to have to bow down. The demons are going to have to bow down. Even Donald Trump, the president, is going to have to bow down one day. And even those that do you wrong are going to have to bow down one day. Those that are unbelieving in God are going to have to bow down because every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And every person is going to have to say, Lord God, you are our Lord and Savior. You are the one. You are the master and you are the true king. And for the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endures all generations. Was the Lord thy God is good, and His mercy will continue to go on. His mercy will continue to live on, and He is the God of yesterday, today, and forever. And God will never change. You see, people change. The world changes. Nature changes. There's a lot of things that change, but God never changes. And He is the only person that stays the same. And He is the only person that we should be concerned about is the Lord God Almighty. And I thank God for just another wonderful message and just giving Him glory and praise and for the rules of living holy and for giving Him thanksgiving and praise. And I hope this message has helped someone today. And like I said, it wasn't a long message, but it was a very good and impactful message. It was a joyful message. And I thank God for just another wonderful message. And just thank God for His glory and praise and honor.